in a long time, uh, the, and the potential for a greater political clarity than we have seen in a very long time in the world. And with that, the potential for regroupment. Uh, and that's one reason I'm very excited to have this event. It's because we do have people from a variety of different political tendencies coming together to talk about what to do next. Uh, for today's presentation, uh, we have uh, several excellent speakers. We have William J. Robinson, Professor of Sociology and Global and International Studies, University of California, Santa Barbara. We have Blanca Mise, teacher at San Francisco State University, who is a part of Lavos Workers' Voice and the International Workers' League. Um, we have Simon Porras Rodriguez, who's a co-author of Why Did Chavismo Fail? is a Venezuelan activist and an editor at venezuelanvoices.org and a member of International Workers' Unity, Fourth International. We have Jaime Gonzalez, Liga de Unidad Socialista in Mexico. And we have Ernie Gada, who's a union activist and socialist resurgence in the National Committee and Tendency for Revolutionary International, Fourth International. Uh, my name is Dan Bell. I am also in socialist resurgence and I'm very um, uh, honored to be able to chair this uh, event. Uh, so here's how the structure is going to work today. Each panel, and the panelists are going to go in the order that I just read, uh, unless there's some emergency that I'm unfamiliar with. Please let me know if there's an issue with the order. Someone has to leave at a certain time. I believe this should work for uh, what I've been told at least. Um, but here's how it will work. Each panelist will open with a five-minute presentation. And these opening remarks will be followed by a round or two of exchanges among the panelists that address in some ways uh, several questions that we are going to uh, provide in the discussion. This, uh, these responses will be about four minutes each. Then we will move to allow panelists to respond to written questions posed by the audience via the chat function of the webinar software. Uh, we are going to ask panelists to not exceed three minutes in responding to these questions. And the program will end with three minutes closing, three minute closings by each speaker. Uh, just for future reference, the questions we'll pose after the opening remarks will be, what are the conditions that fueled the recent upsurges in several countries in Latin America? Talk about some of the most advanced expression of working class militancy and working class independence. What are the main obstacles in the path of development of the struggle? And what does all this mean regarding the tasks of organizations and activists in Latin America, in the US? So uh, without further ado, we can begin with opening remarks for five minutes by William J. Robinson. So if you could unmute yourself. Yes, um, thank you very much. Good, I think I'm the only one in the morning. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, just for clarification, it's my middle initial is I. Um, William I. Robinson. So um, I, I want to I start by saying that the la current Latin American conjuncture cannot be understood outside of its larger backdrop. And for me, that backdrop is the political dynamics of a new round of capitalist expansion worldwide and especially in Latin America, and the crisis of global capitalism in Latin America and worldwide. For me, global capitalism is facing an organic crisis. And by this, I mean there is a structural dimension and a political dimension. Structurally, capitalism is facing perhaps its most severe crisis of what we can call overaccumulation um, uh, in its history and in an attempt to expand to, to respond to that crisis, there's been a new round of violence, very often militarized uh, expansion of uh, capital worldwide. That's what's taking place right now structurally, and then the response to that. Uh, politically, there's been a, there's an ongoing breakdown of capitalist hegemony and state legitimacy. Just about every state in the world is facing crises of um, legitimacy, and this is leading the system towards more coercive and more repressive forms of rule. We're really moving towards a, uh, what I call a global police state. And in response to this crisis of the system's hegemony and legitimacy, that's part of the explanation for the upsurge in popular and class struggles uh, worldwide and the rise of global anti-capitalist and even socialist uh, sentiment. So Latin America is really, really is an expression of this dual crisis of 
global capitalism. And I think then we need to go into a little bit of background over the last few decades. Uh, the mass uh, revolutionary and popular struggles of the 1960s and 1970s were beaten back. That's a story for another time, but starting in the 1980s up until the early 21st century, we have this violent uh, imposition of capitalist globalization on Latin America. The region is swept up into capitalist globalization um, and neoliberalism, which is are the, the, the sets of policies and practices to facilitate this capitalist uh, expansion and globalization wrecked havoc on the region and especially on the popular and, and working classes. So we see from about 1999 or so uh, to 2005, a mass uprisings throughout the region. And it is these mass uprisings that brought the left to power in one country after another, usually by uh, electoral means. So the left comes to power um, and um, and uh, pursues a program, but it's very important to say the left comes to power through elections and not by overturning the capitalist state, not by any fundamental transformation in property and in class relations. So the projects that the uh, left governments, and of course I'm simplifying to try and say this in five minutes, but there were uh, more leftist governments, more social democratic governments, uh, the, the uh, Venezuelan government dramatically different or the project in Venezuela, of course, than the, the Brazilian workers, uh, PT uh, project, but the, the um, uh, program followed by the left, left governments was capturing surplus through taxing uh, corporations and the wealthy, and then redistributing that through social programs below to reduce uh, to reduce um, poverty. So this was a strategy, and this has been broadly critiqued. This is not my original analysis here. A strategy of what we can call extractivist accumulation by a dramatic expansion of natural resource and more raw material production and export to global markets, especially a new vast new round of transnational mining, uh, transnational agribusiness and oil and gas production. And it's critical to say that this uh, dramatic expansion of extractivist accumulation is done in alliance with transnational capital and the foreign and local contingents of the transnational mm -hmm. I'm sorry, you, we're just getting a request from translation to slow down a bit. I know you don't have much time, but just for that purpose, is that possible? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, so I was saying that the um, program pursued by the leftist governments was one of what I'm calling, and others have called, extractivist accumulation that saw a dramatic expansion of transnational mining, agribusiness and oil and gas production uh, organized by these leftist states, although they were capitalist states, and critically in alliance, this was done in alliance with transnational capital and with foreign and local contingents of the transnational capitalist class. And from the time these governments took power, right up until most of them have been overthrown already, we see actually, and quite ironically, a greater concentration of land and capital in uh, in the hands of transnational capital. So uh, as we get to the second decade of the 21st century, there has been no, 30, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Well, mm -hmm. um, I think I got to stop right there then. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Robinson. Um, next, we have uh, Blanca Misse. Hi. Thank you so much uh, to Socialist Resurgence for inviting me. Um, here in the Bay Area, we have organized several talks on the Latin America uprising and we have been sharing our experiences and listening and learning from our comrades from Chile in the MIT and from Colombia in the PST. So we have been following mostly what's happening in Colombia and Chile. And the first question we have asked ourselves here is, what do we have to learn from these political processes of struggle that are happening today in Latin America, um, especially for comrades and activists in the United States? And I think the first thing for us is that we're seeing these big moments and mobilizations that are so advanced in the struggle, way far beyond what we could see here in the US, that different questions are posed for social activists when mass struggle goes beyond one day of mobilization, right? First, we have big mobilizations that go on for days, for weeks, for months. And then the question that is posed is how do we transform this mobilization, which is reacting against a government uh, measure that people dislike, into a revolutionary process that will be able or at least pose the question of transitioning towards socialism. So it's very important that we kind of understand the kind of movements we're seeing in Latin America and how we can learn from them because this is not an experience we have seen in the US at least for the last 
40 or 60 years of going to a process where the position, the possibility of overthrowing a government and going beyond overthrowing a government is posed in a country. And so, of course, I agree very much with uh, what our comment said on the uh, situation of global capitalism and seeing these mobilizations as a response to neoliberalism and extractivism, and also to the delayed impact of the economic crisis in Latin America, which has forced this collection of governments, which seem very different for conservative governments like Macri in Argentina, to left bourgeois governments of Maduro, to social democratic governments. All of these governments are now facing mass resistance from below in an unprecedented wave of mass mobilization. And I would like to speak a little bit of the specificities of what's happening in Chile, because in our international, we see that what is happening in Chile is the most advanced process of mass mobilization from the working class. The first thing that is very important is that in Chile, there is a big consciousness, and I know, and we're gonna talk about that later, that there is a connection between neoliberalism, right? That has been implemented from the dictatorship on and after the dictatorship in the democratic bourgeois democratic regime by the Concertacion government, there is a connection between this neoliberal offense that has destroyed uh, uh, workers' standards of living and a political tendency to go towards dictatorship and repression. Neoliberalism was only being able to be implemented through dictatorship. And that's that the violence of capitalism has been felt very clearly and very acutely. And this violence of capitalism is felt today when massively population takes back response and the violence of repression. So the articulation between the economic and the political is very clear. And so the um, youth and workers in the street and the Mapuche people who are mobilizing are saying, we reject these 30 years of package of these uh, two kinds of governments that have been alternating uh, imposing these. The second thing I think, and I know we're gonna talk about, uh, about this later, is that we have seen in Chile the development of popular assemblies, or like we could say, proto-organizations of dual power. That is to say, organizations of the working class to organize its movement, but not only to organize its movement, but start organizing different ways of thinking about what society could be like. And it's very uneven, it's very much of a beginning, but this development of the popular assemblies, the cabildos in Chile, is one of the distincting features of the Chilean movement, we're not seeing that quite yet in Colombia. For example, in Colombia, we had also inspired by the Chilean wave, big mobilizations with general strikes of unprecedented dimensions. But still the mobilizations are not being organized from below so clearly, they're more being overseen by a national strike committee, which is not the organic expression of this popular mobilization from below. Uh, and also connected to this question of the popular assemblies, another very important question that is posed in Chile that we need to reflect on as socialists is the connection. Uh, so yeah. one minute, Blanca. Yeah. And again, I know you don't have a lot of time, but if yeah. you can slow down translators yeah. or, yeah. And the connection between these popular assemblies and the organized workers movement, right? What is, how these two connect together? Um, and the last thing we, we, we we will discuss, and I think it's important for us, is the attempts, the first attempts from the government to co-opt and deviate this process towards the path of constituent assembly. And I know we're gonna talk about it, but this is a very important learning moment for us to learn and to kind of discuss with our comrades. And the last thing I wanna see, and I know we're gonna talk about this, and this is not just a learning moment for us in the United States. It's also a political moment of activation. How do we support and intervene? And how do we want build an international movement to help succeed this, this struggle, right? It's not just about the school of the class struggle, it's about we being actors in this class struggle, thinking what workers here, what the youth here can do to help the Chilean workers, the Colombian workers, the Colombian people win their struggle. And I'll stop here because I know I'm at the 